This episode is brought to you by Ariston Specialties in Bloomfield, Connecticut. They're makers of amazing olive oils and other Greek delights. Check them out online at aristonspecialties.com. That's Ariston, A-R-I-S-T-O-N, specialties.com. Welcome to Faith Middleton's all-new Food Schmooze Party Podcast, an independent podcast with all the things we hope that you love. You know, there have always been diets that are hot, and now we have the keto diet. And so we're going to get into it with you and our special guest. What, what do you hear what he's doing? We're not doing reruns over here. We're doing original, brand new stuff. Um, the all-stars are with me to talk about the keto diet. Chris Prosperi of Metro Beast in Simsbury, Connecticut. Joanne Church, our associate producer in New London, plus our special guest and engineer, and that is Carl Franklin. So uh, he lives in Quaker Hill, Connecticut, and he is, uh, you know, our engineer, yes, but he does his own podcast, which is called Two, the number two, Two Keto Dudes. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hey, Faith. Hey, exciting. New show. Yeah. I know. So we're, <laughs> we are going to talk, you know, we've got a fried chicken, a keto fried chicken recipe coming up. What do you hear about yep. this? You think, oh, you can't possibly have that on this diet. Well, Carl knows what to do about this kind of stuff. It means I don't have to stop at Popeye's anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right, Carl. Uh, hey. Let's. Why don't we begin with you? Special, special welcome. Uh, so, so t- explain what is the keto diet? Okay. Well, keto is short for ketogenic, and ketogenic means a diet that puts your body in a metabolic state where it creates ketones as a water soluble fuel energy source, and it's an alternative to glucose, which is what most people are used to burning for fuel. If you eat carbohydrates, you eat fruit, you eat, uh, you know, sandwiches, bread, ice cream, whatever, uh, most of that has glucose, which enters your bloodstream immediately. And uh, type 2 diabetes is a disease of too much glucose, too high for a prolonged period of time. And it usually comes on at a later time in life. Right. So the antidote for type 2 diabetes is to restrict carbohydrates and sort of force your body into the ketone generation mode, generating ketones, meaning uh, that you are now ketogenic. And after a couple of weeks, uh, you become more and more efficient at burning those ketones for fuel and your body sort of forgets how to use glucose. And uh, there's a transition time in there where it can be kind of hard. We'll talk about the things that you can do to get over that. And after a few months, you're what you call fat adapted, meaning you are a ketone burning machine. And uh, and that is a wonderful place to be. Wow. So, um, Carl, as you know, to get ready for this show, I have been on the keto diet or the ketogenic diet yeah. for two weeks and um, I, I hope you'll help me out because I have not lost one ounce. So if you can di- diagnose what is happening to me, that would be great. But first, tell us the kinds of things that you can have to get into the ketogenic state. Sure. Well, um, so the things on your good list are fats like butter, <laughs> cream, <Yay>. lard, <laughs> bacon fat. <laughs> right? Bacon, um, tallow, which is beef fat, and um, meats that are higher in fat. For vegetable fats, uh, olive oil is pretty good. Avocado oil is really good. Coconut oil is like even better. Of course, eggs and uh, any kind of any kind of protein that doesn't have sugar or starch. And sugar and starch are the things that are on your bad list. Remember the old Atkins diet, mm-hmm. which was a little bit like this. Yeah. And then we started hearing reports that people were having to go to the doctor or the hospital or there were, you know, problems with their renal system and, mm. and all that. So what about the health effects 
of what you just just described in sure. terms of heart health, cholesterol, uh, and and other health issues. Yeah, it's a big loaded question. But what I will do is tell you that I was on the Atkins diet like in the early 90s. Atkins pretty much recommended this, the induction diet, I think he called it. And that was essentially 20 grams of carbs per day maximum. And pretty much all the, all the protein and fat that you can eat. And he knew that people had an aversion to eating too much. Like if you, if you eat too much bacon, you're not going to feel well. You're going to feel like, oh, I, I can't eat anymore, you know? We so have he, no idea what you're talking about. No? <laughs> we don't Satiety? Know. Not a, not a thing. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, what he didn't do, and because the science wasn't out, he didn't put a cap on how much protein per day you should eat. And a well-formulated ketogenic diet, as defined by Stephen Finney and Jeff Volokh in their excellent book, the Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living, he basically defined a well-formulated ketogenic diet as having, yes, 20 grams maximum carbs per day, and one to one and a half grams of protein for every kilogram of lean body mass that you have. So wow. what is that? Okay, well, you can calculate your lean body mass by your height, and it's essentially if you had no fat on your body, how much would you weigh, right? So that's your lean body mass, everything minus fat. And there's also things that you can measure that with. There's uh, something that you get into and float in water, and they can figure out what your LBM, your lean body mass is. But pretty much you can calculate it. There's places you can calculate it online from your height. And based on that, I can have about 80 to 100 grams of protein, of pure protein, a day. So from that, you figure out, okay, well, that ribeye steak that I just ate, you know, you look up how many grams of protein are in that. All right, it's probably about 60. So one big ribeye steak is getting pretty close, a little over half of what I can have for the day. Oh. Right? So the people on the Atkins diet were just like, you know, protein is easier to – um was e certainly easier to, to do for most people than fat. Let's face it, we have been told since the early 80s, even before that, that fat was the enemy, and we have become disgusted by fat. I remember talking to a friend of mine, and he got a prime rib. He cut all his fat off, and it was like beautiful <laughs> jelly rendered. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, the best part. can you just eat that with you? Cut it off and eat it with your meat? And he goes, I would throw up right here if I did that. I'm like, why? He goes, it's just disgusting. And it's actually really delicious. It is delicious. Uh, at my family, we used to fight when we had steak. Yeah. Uh, which was a, a rare occasion. But when we had a steak, we would all fight over the crispy oh. fat yeah. to see who was oh. going to get that. Of course. It still tastes, you know, like duck fat. Duck fat. Delicious. Right. When it's rendered properly, if it's not and it's chewy no. and mm. nasty, nobody wants okay. to eat that. But if it's rendered mm. nicely... So, you know, yeah. even as you s describe this, Carl, and I, yeah. I don't know, Joanne and Chris, how you feel about this, but I can hear in my head you know, folks listening, and you might be saying to yourself, listener, come on, this is not good for people, or my, right. my partner has an, an issue with cholesterol. Right. And so where are the specialists, the health people, the doctors – who nutritionists who say this is okay, Carl? Carl Franklin. The low carb, high fat, i.e., ketogenic diet is probably the most widely studied diet in history. A company called Verta that was started by Stephen Finney, and they have published a comprehensive list of low carb research. And if you go to research2 keto, that's number two, two keto.com. 2keto.com is one of my domains that I use for these shortcuts to make it easy for people to find things. So if you go to research.2keto.com, it's a comprehensive list of low-carb research, lots and lots of randomized trials. Here's the first one on top. It says, a novel intervention including individualized nutritional recommendations reduces hemoglobin A1C level, that's blood sugar, 
medication use, and weight in type 2 diabetes. And the summary is, this study demonstrates an individualized program delivered and supported remotely that incorporates nutritional ketosis can be highly effective in improving glycemic control and weight loss in adults with type 2 diabetes while significantly decreasing medication use. And there's another one of a 12-month randomized trial of a moderate carbohydrate versus very low carbohydrate in overweight adults with type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. The summary of that, these results suggest that adults with prediabetes or non-insulin dependent type 2 diabetes may be able to improve glycemic control with less medication by following an ad libitum, means eat what you want, very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet compared to a moderate carbohydrate calorie restricted low fat diet. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Yes. So, um, Carl, what could I be doing wrong? I've been on it for two weeks. Okay. And, um, I did get the test strips. Mm-hmm. And so I can tell that I am in moderate ketosis. Great. And, um, so I'm puzzled about why the weight isn't coming off. Yeah. Do you think it is because I am having still too ma- too much of something? Is it the wine that I drink? I don't know. Let's uh, let's find out what you what's a typical day for you when you when you wake Uh-oh. up. Oh, okay. you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, I, I start with a dozen donuts. <laughs> no, come on. I no. know. Start okay, with a so, light, um, light white. <laughs> I, I have uh, one or two strips of bacon, my, one of my favorite foods. Turkey bacon or real bacon? Real bacon. All and right. then I have uh, two fried eggs or boiled eggs mm-hmm. and uh, some either water or tea and with no sugar. And there you go. Butter? And, Put butter on those eggs? Yes. I, I cook the eggs in uh, olive oil. Okay. So, and then if there's any little bit of olive oil in the pan, I pour them on the top of the eggs. Nice. So I get some fat. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm feeling good about this. Then at lunchtime, I go out with, and by the way, our mascot for the show, Bon Bon, my dog, is uh, sleeping right next to me. And, you know, he looked up at me and said, you know, he could indicate that <laughs> this is one of the best diets he's ever heard of. In, uh-huh. in his <laughs> he likes the bacon, yeah. Um, so then at lunchtime, I often take him to an outdoor cafe. Mm -hmm. If it's winter, I'm in a heated jacket and I bring him in a blanket. And if it's nice weather out, I'm in these outdoor cafes and I have generally, uh, because he loves it, a cheeseburger (laughs) and some greens, you know, a little bit of a salad Mm -hmm. and uh, a glass or two of wine. Mm-hmm. And the same kind of thing at dinner. I may have poached chicken with some olive oil on it, and you know, I. Uh, mm. But I, I may have a glass of wine again with dinner. And so, yeah. what are you thinking, Carl? Okay. Well, first of all, it doesn't sound like your your fat to protein ratio is is in check. I, I think you might want to cut back on the protein a little bit and increase the fat a little bit. And I know that's hard to do with just a cheeseburger. A good fatty steak is a good idea or just good meats like, you know, lamb, uh, lamb chops with a fat cap, pork chop with a fat cap. You can always make up for it by adding butter, you know. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound bad. Or if you're like me and you're sick in the head, you you make your own like chipotle mayonnaise with avocado oil and you bring a little squeeze bottle with you and you just yeah. pfft, oh. all over everything. Oh, <laughs> That sounds delicious. I'll go to a, a pizza place and I'll order a special pizza without onions because onions are the carbiest of the vegetables that you'll get uh, in your standard fare. And uh, I just have them make it on a crust, but I don't eat the crust. Just peel the top off and eat that. And that's a good solution. Wait, you wait. Can... What do you mean? What do you mean you peel the top off? All right. So, you know, like Greek pizza, like it's thick. Yeah. It's got a lot of toppings, right? We're not talking about the Italian pizza. Yeah. That's just some cheese on them. Yeah. So you just, uh, you get a, a special pizza that has like everything on it and hold the onions and maybe some extra cheese. And you just take your knife and fork and just eat the topping. Oh. Topping comes right off. Interesting. But get it a, make it a white pizza. Hold the sauce because the sauce is kind of carby too. But I'll tell you what, you don't miss it. It's, they put some garlic, some ricotta, some olive oil on the bottom. <laughs> oh. Bacon, sausage, pepperoni. Yeah. Oh, now, right. now here's the other thing. Here's the other thing you can do. You can go through McDonald's 
And you can get some triple cheeseburgers with no buns. And again, bring your trusty mayo squeeze bottle. McDonald's. Right? (laughs) You can do it. You can do keto at at fast food. You just have to avoid the bun. Bon Bon doesn't like cheeseburgers from McDonald's. He wants it from the cafe. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. Good thing he likes lamb. Well, now tell me how you do, Carl, on Mm. the the ketogenic diet. How do you do your fried chicken? Oh, this is so cool. So if you go to chicken.2keto.com, this is published by a company called Keto Chow. Um, and they make, and you have some keto chow, right, Faith? Yes, because Carl brought this to me and care package. I, it, a really beautiful care package of these drinks. And, you know, you don't have to do this, but, no, you no, know, no. I've been eating their cinnamon crisps. Oh, that's a different and, company. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Fox Hill Kitchen. But there's a lot of products out there, apparently. So go ahead. Yeah. So these guys make a, these guys make a shake meal replacement that's that's keto. It's very, very popular. But they also make soup bases, and they make one for chicken soup. Mm-hmm. And that chicken soup base is a remarkable replacement for flour when you do a breading station, wow. right? So when you do a breading station when you're frying, you know, I would use lard or tallow. But if you can't use either of those and you want to go on the cheap, you can use some peanut oil. And I would never use peanut oil for anything but deep frying, really high temperatures. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it can really stand up to those temperatures. Don't use canola oil. Don't use corn oil. Don't use vegetable oils. Those things will kill you. But uh, peanut oil is about the best of the vegetable oils. But again, I'd rather use lard or tallow. So anyway, basically, you create a breading station. So you create an egg wash bowl, and you put some of that keto chow chicken soup mix out on a plate. Wow. Great idea. Yep. And then for your breading, you take crushed pork rinds, which you can just take pork <laughs> rinds in a in a food processor and whiz them up till they're coarse crumbs and add about three to one pork rinds to pecorino romano cheese. Wow. Oh. All right. And season that however you want. And that is your breading. So then you do the standard thing. Like you take the chicken and I take the chicken and I brine it in salt water overnight. Right, and I take thin chicken breasts, really thin, pound them out if they're not thin, right, and then wash them off, put them in the egg wash, dip them in that keto chow mix, back in the egg wash, into the breading, into the fryer. Wow, it's just the crispiest, crunchiest, deliciousest fried chicken. Oh my god! And it's heart healthy, and everything about it is great. You know. Wait a minute, I have to say this. All right, this is the brand new uh, independent podcast, Food Schmooze Party. I'm Faith Middleton. I'm I'm with the, the gang, Joanne Church and Chris Prosper of Metro Beast in Simsbury, Connecticut. But our very special guest and is also an engineer on the show uh, is Carl Franklin, and he does a podcast of his own called Two Keto Dudes. Yes. And so... When I was trying this and reading all about this, it's not like I'm sitting here and we're all endorsing something. It's not, it's not mm. like that because you ha- I've learned over a million years that you have to be careful with that kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't want to go out that far out on a limb, but I have to say it is enjoyable <laughs> to mm. be on the keto diet. <laughs> um, I think I have to lighten up on maybe on – well, I think it's the wine. It sounds like wine. it's a lot of wine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, 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 I Listen, I, when I drink wine like that, when I drink wine like that, and believe me, I have um, a lot, <laughs> especially from the pandemic to now. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I, didn't lose a, I didn't lose a pound. Yeah. yeah. But okay. if, I, if I limit it to like two glasses in the afternoon after lunch and then – that's it. And I'm done eating and drinking everything at five. Mm-hmm. Uh, weight comes off. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I, do with, I do with soda water, and that's working for me yeah. great. So in other words, instead of a full glass of wine, I fill the glass halfway with wine, and I top it with soda water. And it's, it's just yeah. as enjoyable, especially in the summertime. Right. And refreshing. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> no, it is <laughs> – no, it is. So what Chris is making is a spritzer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's good. Um, 
that's that's good, but it's not. I mean, here I am in a profession where I'm supposed to be tasting wines and mm. recommending them to you yeah. because they taste so good. So I guess I would have to, um, you know, because I should spit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that got me in trouble at a wine tasting. <laughs> um, so <laughs> oh, there's a story. I know. I thought that the spitting technique was going to be really great, and the uh, the owner or the organizer of the entire festival, which featured about a hundred, hundred and fifty uh, wine producers, he said to me, "Faith, <laughs> even if you spit everything." He said, I'm, I'm going to have my eye on you because the <laughs> wine goes down where your tongue is and it gets absorbed into your body and you can be drunk at the end of a wine tasting where you have spit everything. Wow. And so that's a great lesson for those of us who want to be careful not to have, you know, uh, more than a glass if we're driving because that's sure. how it happens. It goes down through mm -hmm. under your tongue. Mm. into your body. So, um, well, I'm a little sad about that part about the wine, but, um, but that's Me okay too. because I like the sound of the other part because I enjoy, uh, healthy fats and I enjoy protein and mm. I like the idea of, uh, ground up, uh, pork rinds. You know, mm. that all just sounds delicious. And pecorino cheese, that sounds oh, yeah. really delicious, yeah. Carl. It is. Um, okay, so what are you all thinking, Joanne and Chris? What are you thinking as you listen to this? Are you nervous? Do you think it's... Well, I thought Carl made it sound more interesting than I've ever heard before. So thanks, Carl. I would be open mm -hmm. to Welcome. trying it. Um, I've always been in the mindset that fat is not good. And when you're documenting what mm -hmm. you eat, you have to be careful mm -hmm. where those grams of fat go. So I think I too yeah. would enjoy the diet. And for two weeks, I think it would be fun. I'm going to try it. There's another book that I can recommend you guys. It's called The Big Fat Surprise. Oh, <laughs> I love the title. By Nina Teicholz. So she basically went and looked up all the research on saturated fat, especially those studies that vilify saturated fat, and it turns out everybody got it completely wrong. And not only did they get it wrong, but in certain cases they tried to cover up their findings and falsely report things. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like a story of intrigue. Right? It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And Carl, you're going to post this information? I will, yeah. And Nina Teicholz, by the way, is speaking in New London at Keto Fest on the 16th of July. Very cool. So you could actually go talk to her and see her presentation. Okay. The Big Fat Surprise. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I went online and started looking at recipes, uh, everybody. And one of the ones that I found was an eggplant parmesan uh, mm. the keto recipe with no breadcrumbs. So, mm. Carl, if you just hearing me describe that, do you have a thought about how you would do a recipe like that? I would do the same, give it the same treatment. I mean, you know, you, you use the same sort of breading technique. Uh huh. Then you can do it with everything. You do it with shrimp, you can do it with eggplant. Um, if you're going to use tomato sauce, this is something that's important. The one that I've found that has the lowest amount of carbs is Rayo's marinara. Oh, nice. That's what I use. Okay. It also happens to be completely delicious. Yes. Yes, it is. Three grams per half cup. Does it matter what uh, we would use for our pork rinds? Because those, those can be a little cheesy, if you know what I mean. Um, I can, I, I like oots or uts or however uts. you. Yeah. Yep. Uts. Yeah, and you can get them at any grocery store, buy a couple of bags. One bag will probably bread. You know, four or five chicken breasts mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I just, um, <laughs> it, you know, it, I don't know about you, but if it makes you a little speechless um, as you're listening, it makes me speechless as I listen to Carl. And um, during the whole COVID period, I have done a lot of sitting around, except for taking Bon Bon the dog on his walks. And uh, and so I put on a little weight, and I'm interested in getting it off. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to see what happens with this. 
Yeah, I'm I'm interested in the fuel aspect of this because all through my career we were taught the fuel is the carb, right? That's and if yeah. you don't have carbs, then you feel it because you don't you don't have the energy to do anything. And I'm right. more interested in in really finding out more about what is it ketos- ketosis. Ketosis, yeah, nutritional yeah. ketosis. Yeah. So 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 what happens when you restrict carbs uh, to that level? Yeah. In the first week or two, you are going to be sapped of energy because your body doesn't quite know how to make ketones yet, and there really isn't enough glucose. And so uh, it will figure it out, and it will all even out eventually. But you know, you can supplement with MCT oil or just eating more fat right mm-hmm. away, especially like butter, because butter is it? Let me see. A short chain uh, triglyceride, yeah. I think, is what it's called, right? And so, rather than getting processed through all of the other ways that your body processes fats, it goes right to the portal vein in the liver, yeah. which then crosses the blood-brain barrier quickly. So you get energy to your brain by eating butter, and you also may feel dizzy and this kind of thing. But this is this is the key. They they call it like keto flu or yeah, or, you know whatever. But what's really going on is your kidneys are finally at their level, their normal levels of flushing salt. Normally, on a regular standard American diet, we eat so many carbs that your kidneys retain salt, and that's not normal. So the way that we've all been eating so long is not normal. So, you know, since the since the end of World War II, when everything was processed food and everything like that, mm-hmm. right? More carbs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the normal function for kidneys is to get rid of salt, and so you have to really kick up salt and other electrolytes. I have an electrolyte drink that I that I mix from powder. Gatorade works. Mm-hmm. Put a little salt in the Gatorade. Get some Himalayan salt tablets. If you if you don't like the taste of salt, you can get them in capsules, and just pop a few of those. Um, there's a great book. Here's another great book you should read. It's called The Salt Fix by James D. Nicolantonio. We interviewed him on Two Keto Dudes too. And I was just amazed at all, all of the research he did on salt, you know, when you're ketogenic. Um, just a single cup of coffee depletes you of, I can't remember how many grams of salt, but it's coffee really sucks the salt out of you. Wow. Mm. So you get up in the morning, you have a coffee and you're in ketosis and you have your bacon or whatever, and maybe it's not enough salt and you feel like dizzy or kind of like bleh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. But once you get over that, then you feel like you have a superpower. Okay. Because you have a, a con- glucose is the kind of thing that goes up and down and up mm-hmm. and down. And when you crash, you have to have more, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so it's very hard to maintain a constant level, but ketones, your liver creates those. So I can, we're talking about the ketogenic diet, which is a kind of hot diet for the past uh, year, let's say. Um, so Carl Franklin, our special guest and associate producer on the show, uh, I can see cardiologists at, let's say, Yale, because I happen to live close to Yale, jumping up and down, <laughs> waving their arms right now. No butter. Because <laughs> they do have uh, clients whose heart disease uh, dictates that they take it easy with salt or they take it easy with uh, certain kinds of fats. So how do you respond to that, Carl? The deal with cardiologists is they all believe that high cholesterol is a a detriment, right? It's bad for you. It causes heart disease, heart attacks. If your LDL is too high when you go to your doctor, they're going to ask you to sit down and take it easy, you know? And the ketogenic diet is known for raising LDL, but it's not so simple. First of all, there is no evidence that high LDL causes heart disease. In fact, there is evidence to the contrary. There is evidence that low LDL causes heart disease. But in order to get the real story, you have to get a subfraction analysis of your LDL. I'm going to make it simple for you. LDL is a lipoprotein, and a lipoprotein is a way to carry lipids around in the bloodstream because they're water-soluble. They're proteins, right? So think of it like a boat or a submarine. Inside the LDL, you have cholesterol, You have triglycerides and fat-soluble vitamins and things. And LDL has a lifespan. And if it hangs around too much, it gets small and dense. 
And those particles are dangerous. Those are the ones that have been associated with heart attacks. But on a ketogenic diet, when you're not eating carbohydrates, guess what? Those LDL particles are light and fluffy and benign. No kidding. And so most of cardiologists are kind of waking up to the subfraction analysis, but maybe they don't quite know what it means yet. But I bet you dollars to donuts that within the next 10 years, um, we'll figure this out. Another website that you should check out is cholesterolcode.com. Now, this is run by Dave Feldman, and he's not a doctor. He's a citizen scientist, but he discovered something that I think will go down in history as one of the greatest discoveries in the world of cholesterol in the history of medicine. He discovered a protocol by which you can manipulate your LDL when you go in for, to draw blood in either direction by a, a remarkable number, 100 points or more, just by what you eat the three days prior. Think about that for a second. Gotcha. Yeah. And guess what? It's completely unintuitive. If the three days before your blood test, you eat a lot of fat. Now, you have to eat no carbs no matter what, right? But if you eat a lot of fat, I, I think he said something like 600 grams a day. Like you have to struggle to eat that much fat for three days. And then you fast for 14 hours, go get your blood test. Your LDL is going to be low. If you do it the opposite way, in three days you eat practically nothing, like you, you re calorie restrict and you don't eat a lot of fat, but you're still not eating carbs, uh -huh. your LDL is going to shoot up. Wow. So how, you know, everybody wants to be on a diet, or this, it seems like a smart idea to be on a diet that doesn't feel restrictive and that you can be on long term. Mm. So um, Carl Franklin, how do you... Uh, you know, who, Carl does this podcast, Two Keto Dudes, and we are, right. uh, it, it's really interesting. I was watching it. How do you, you know, can we live on this way? Can, I mean, you know, like what happened to Atkins? It went away because people couldn't. It didn't go away. It just got refined. And the ketogenic diet is the, the modern Atkins diet, if you think about it that way. I mean, it's pretty much just refined. And as I said, he didn't put a cap on protein. But the well-formulated ketogenic diet is, is uh, 20 grams or less, one to one and a half grams of protein for every kilogram of lean body mass, and eating fat to satiety. Meaning that when you're eating fat and the right amount of protein, if you're full, stop. Uh -huh. So first of all, let me give you some results. I went in as a diabetic uh, in 2016. I was 366 pounds. Uh, my A1C was 7.8, something like that, 7.7, .7, I can't remember now, but I was diabetic. And in just a year, I had lost 80 pounds wow. and became non-diabetic. Wow. No. And I lived that way for a couple of years, three or four years. The pandemic happened. It actually started before the pandemic, but the pandemic really, really screwed me over, like most people. We still don't know what COVID does to our metabolism and to our gut bacteria and all the other things that affect what we do. But I know so many people in the ketogenic world who just completely lost it during the pandemic. Yeah. And I was one of them. So I gained back like 40 pounds and finally got, you know, my, my stuff worked out. You know, I'm back on the straight and narrow, 12 pounds down now. Mm. And, um, you know, my markers are improving. Just got, I just, you know, said it's time to restart, you know, got to do it seriously. Mm -hmm. So I know people that we've interviewed on Two Keto Dudes who've, like Richard Morris, he's been in ketosis for almost 10 years. We interviewed somebody who has been on the ketogenic diet for 14 years, 20 years. And that it's just, you know, if you follow it and, you, and, and it works for you, you keep going. The, the body was, this isn't a trick diet. It's more like the carbohydrate diet that we're used to is the fad diet. And this is sort of getting back to what we ate before the Industrial Revolution. So, Carl, um, what if you're, you know, I, you know, I've been on this for two weeks trying it out yeah. to see what it's like. What if you, I have gone through certain days and it's been recent where I am all of a sudden craving uh, 
carbs, you know, during mm-hmm. the start of the key, uh, p- pandemic, because I wasn't really going into stores or anything like that. I would, yeah. I would eat lots of pasta and, you know, before you knew it, I was 15 mm. pounds up. Uh, yep. So, you know, and, and now I'm trying to get that off. You know, what do you do if you have these, uh, streaks of craving for the, for the other you, way? You, you eat more fat and you cut the wine. Yeah. Um, for me, wine gives me cravings, especially after the second glass. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I find I find you know carbs very hard to resist, especially late at night. So um, I found that works for me. And here's here's a thing to try: like give yourself just like one day, cook a nice ribeye for yourself, or some fatty lamb chops, or some <laughs> really nice fatty piece of meat. Right. Mm-hmm. Just put butter on it, and that's like the only thing that you eat. You could go to Longhorn Steakhouse and get a cowboy ribeye, say, I don't want anything else, just give me some water, some ribeye, some butter, right? Take your time, eat that thing, get full, and that's all you're going to eat for the rest of the day. And, and, for the rest and just of the busy day? Your, yeah, for the rest of the day. Busy uh-huh. yourself, don't have any wine, just, yeah. just busy yourself, you know, drink some, some Gatorade or something like that to keep your mouth happy. And I guarantee you'll wake up the next day, you'll be like, food? What? Yeah. What's, what's that? Yeah. Uh, what is this there, food thing you speak of? There are days when I, yes. you know, being on this keto thing where I think, well, on my clock, it says it's dinner time, but oh my God, I don't feel <laughs> hungry. hungry. I, I just yeah, don't feel right. hungry. But then what happens? You have a couple glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, and you're like, give me some wheat thins. <laughs> <laughs> I need donuts. <laughs> Oh, look, I need Popeye's chicken. <laughs> look, there's a box of Paul Newman popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So anyway, the, the sooner you get through that first stage, the easier it's going to be. And the longer you prolong it, the more chances you have to go backwards. So I just recommend barreling through the first week. You know, yeah, it's going to be hard, but... Um, Keep some Gatorade or some electrolyte water. But around. you're you're kind of ex- you're excited the first week because you're trying yeah. something, mm-hmm. and you want to yeah. see that it pays off. Uh, though I am an example of someone who's doing something a little wrong, and therefore I don't see weight coming off at all. And mm. that is not uh, you know that state is not inspiring. Right. To keep going. It's, it's more inspiring when you wake up and you feel like doing calisthenics because yeah. you got so much energy. <laughs> yes. And that happens. That how you get energy. bursts of energy. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, um, I have to say this is so fascinating. Interesting. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, Carl certainly can endorse this diet because of his personal experience and the experience of all these people that he has met, interviewed, and talked to on two podcast dudes, his mm-hmm. podcast. Two and keto dudes, yeah. I mean, sorry, two podcast dudes, <laughs> two keto dudes. And we are um, also podcast dudes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we leave it to you, whatever your choice might be based on your health or d- desire or interest. And, uh, but I have to say, oh, before we get done with the show, Carl, tell us about these wines. Of course, I would be asking about that. Oh, yeah, of course. These yeah, wines yeah. that are very low carb wines. Well, first of all, Malbec and Rioja, those are very low carb red wines. Um, and I found this right here, La Linda Malbec. I actually, they didn't have it at my local wine shop, but I went in and told them and they found a distributor and they got it. And the way I found this is I went to this website, lcbo.com. This is the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. And Canada, they are required by law to list the sugar content of alcohol. Wow. So I went and I searched for Malbecs and I found this Lalinda Malbec and the sugar content is three grams per liter. Wow. So that's not very much. What's a liter? Which what, how much is a, a liter? liter? Well, okay, so a regular bottle is seven hundred and fifty milliliters. Three quarters of a liter. Three quarters of a liter, yeah. A bottle and a quarter. A three bottle grams. and a quarter. So you're looking at two point something grams per bottle. Wow. Okay, you told us about that Canadian liquor board, L C E. Yeah. LCBO dot com. B O But here's the thing, like, you know, when you it, it doesn't take much sugar to sort of interrupt ketosis. And 
the the drinking wine at night thing has the added uh, problem of alcohol. So alcohol pauses ketosis. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't knock you out. But all that time that you, you know, spent in ketosis will go out the window and you have to, you get less hours overnight to be in ketosis, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and that's what I want to do. I want my body working for me while I sleep. I want to wake up in the morning and see I'm a pound down. That's what, that makes me happy in the morning. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating, Carl. So there is, as you mentioned quickly, there is this thing called Keto Fest in New London, Connecticut. And who's going to be there or what, what, what does it feature? Yeah, so Keto Fest is a ketogenic festival. It's a food and science festival. And rather than a conference, which there are keto conferences around that are all about speaking and people speaking and vendors selling cookies and stuff, um, we do have talks there, but it's more than that. It's a party. And I, I decided to do this. I, I came up with the idea in 2017 when we had our first one. And I'm a software developer also, so I go to these conferences and I speak, right? But when I go to the conferences, the talks are secondary to the social aspects of hanging out with friends, talking about things in the hallway, you know, at dinner, in the speaker's lounge. Like, those conversations, to me, are golden. They're more like the podcast, you know? You're just having a conversation with people. So to be able to walk up to someone like Nina Teicholz and say, you know, hey, I read your book, or or I'm still concerned about saturated fat. Give me one sentence that I can tell my doctor so that he's not on my case about taking a statin or all that, right? And so just those conversations to me are invaluable. So Keto Fest is a party. It started out as a, a weekend thing, but this year is the first year we've done it since 2019, and it's only one day. So it's Saturday, July 16th. From sunup to sundown, there's going to be five talks. One from Nina Teicholz, uh, who I've talked about already. One from Eric Westman, who is a doctor from Duke University, who did the science, the research into the Atkins diet when Atkins himself wasn't prepared to do it. He had Dr. Westman come in and prove through the science, uh, through the studies, randomized controlled trials, that the ketogenic diet was actually safe and effective. So, and he's still got a practice in North Carolina. And uh, he's world-renowned, Eric Westman. So he's coming. He's do doing a talk. And he's doing a talk about how ketogenic diet can reverse heart disease. Reverse, not prevent, not, not harm. <laughs> reverse. And so he's got a case study that he's going to show about how the ketogenic diet reversed heart disease. Um, Amber O'Hearn is going to talk. I don't know if you know who she is, but she talks about the carnivore diet a lot. Um, Dave Feldman is kicking off the day with his newly published paper about the Feldman protocol and cholesterol and all of that stuff and why it's not something that we understand quite yet. And Siobhan Huggins is doing a talk on lipedema, not lipidemia, but lipedema. And uh, lipedema is a frequently painful disorder affecting the fat in lymphatics and almost exclusively impacts women. It's frequently underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed as simple obesity. So Siobhan's done the research into that and uh, how it comes on and how to manage it with, guess what? A ketogenic diet. Hmm. And, and in, in between, we're going to have cooking demos. So Richard Morris from Australia is going to be here. He's maybe the two keto dude, right? Mm. He's cooking pork belly and coleslaw. Oh, crispy nice. pork belly! Oh no! And so you'll, everybody will get a taste. Nice. Oh, and I'm doing my fried chicken, which I already mentioned. Uh huh. And then I, the, you mentioned those crisps, yes. the cinnamon crisps yes. that I brought you. Yeah, those are from a place in Vermont called Fox Hill Kitchens. I'll put the link in there as well. Okay, and. You're gluten-free, so I brought you these gluten-free, ketogenic, no-grain crisps that are crispy. They're covered in cinnamon, sugary stuff. Yeah. Allulose is the sweetener. But she makes bagels and buns and bread and has bread mix as well. Yeah. I make my own uh, baguettes and make grinders from them. Um, so she's going to be cooking. With, using her mix, she's created mushu pancakes. Wow. No. Right? Very thin, very stretchy mushu pancakes. Oh. They're delicious. 
She also makes her own hoisin sauce. That's keto. Oh, we have to put duck in there. Well, she's going to make a chicken mushu. Yeah. Ooh. A s- and then, wait, 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 there's more. <laughs> <laughs> and then at five o'clock, you know Robert Ramsey from RD86. Yeah. You've been yes. there several times. Yeah. So, you know, he's got this big smoker. He loves to smoke briskets. And, yes. And yeah, so he's going to smoke up a storm. Wow. And we're going to have smoked brisket and ribs wow. at five o'clock, plus coleslaw. And a couple other sides, and my homemade ice cream, which I'm making from allulose. And I brought you some of that, too, didn't I? So can I just mention that Carl brought me this allulose, A-L-L-U-L-O-S-E, which is um, a keto-friendly sweetener. And so I expected it to taste like the other sweeteners that are on the market, where it's which has a little chemical aftertaste and a little... Mm-hmm. I have never tasted a more real sugar substitute yeah. in um, ever, you know, and I said, yep. what? Uh, you know, so he gave me, Carl gave me a little bit of that and I'm going to try and mm-hmm. figure out what to do with it. But um, yeah. that was great. So, I know. What can you sprinkle it so on? So where yeah. is this going to be in New London? <laughs> so it's at RD86 base, 86 Golden Street. The whole day, right? The whole day. Okay. Yep. And you can get your tickets and see all of the... Details at ketofest.com, K-E-T-O-F-E-S-T.com. We still have tickets left, but they are going fast, especially the all-access pass. Okay. <laughs> well, well, so if you're interested in finding out or challenging someone about this, please. Are you going to be there, Faith? I, I really, really, really hope so. Okay. I really hope so. Say the date again. Uh, July 16th. Yep. I'm going to really... Saturday. I'm going to try my best to be there. That would be so cool. Because I, I want to learn more more about this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Joanne Church, associate producer, Chris Prosperi of Metro Beast in Simsbury, Connecticut. Carl Franklin, who's helping us out and does his own wonderful podcast, TwoKetoDudes.com. I'm Faith Middleton with my dog, Bon Bon, and we will see you next time. Thank mm-hmm. you.